Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we're going to try the geostationary satellite contract again in the hope of eventually having a satellite network in geostationary orbit. Uh, we'll do this targeted satellite set and then we'll have the geostationary communication network and that will uh, sort of close the gaps in our communication hopefully maybe I don't know how the comm thing works now using real antennas frankly. Uh, this is the first time I'm using real antennas so I had used remote tech before, I had used a stock method before, RP2000, the uh, modified career that I made based on RP0 actually uses the stock comms, just modifies them. So yeah, real antennas is one thing that I have to get used to, and we'll see how the relaying works with that. And I think geostationary orbit is where I want it, because after all, Kuru is fairly equatorial, so it makes sense to put our satellites into an equatorial orbit. Most of our launches will be within a belt that the geostationary satellites will be able to cover. Uh, somebody had suggested making a polar orbit satellite network, but that doesn't make any sense from Kuru unless you're doing a whole lot of polar orbit sets for some reason, uh, and I don't intend to. So yeah, mostly our stuff is going east, you know, lunar orbit or out to the rest of the solar system, and that means that a geostationary satellite network is just fine. And so we can put the satellites in that and make sure that they can com uh, communicate. We unlocked uh, higher communication technology recently, so uh, hopefully that will help. But I'm using the word hopefully a whole lot. Uh, Molnia orbit is a whole other thing, but the geostationary one is more pertinent to our needs. And so we'll look into that because we're not in the northern hemisphere per se. I mean, slightly, but not entirely. Uh, the whole lunar orbiter and lunar landing has got to take a lot more science and we are going to get that by trying to send the film camera up and probably some more goo up and trying to recover those. Uh, let's take a look at how much science we can expect out of that. Planetary photography. I mean, I know they're more biomes. They're like 10 biomes or something. And so we can get three for each. It's not huge, but... Uh, well, actually, it's five for each for the space low. So, yeah, not huge, but doable and should get us some. And so I'll cook up a launch for that. But geostationary is the contract one that we're focusing on this time. Uh, so this is the Denim G, but I've changed the geostationary satellite a bit. We used to use the Commutron 16. Oh, comms. Commutron 16 for comms. But I've decided that this dish will be better, the parabolic antenna that we just unlocked. And it, uh, it's a little bit complicated because real antennas is a bit complicated. Uh, the control core controls one ton here, and that is this part, but not the AG1027 stage that we have three of those on. So that'll be dumb fire, and we'll have to spin up. Uh, it occurs to me that we weren't using the service module 2, we have unlocked that. I don't know if it's a good thing or not. Um, it should be. Uh, but I don't know if it's going to need us to retool. No, it needs tooling. It's not that much. Okay, but alright, let's go back to this in 2000 and see the Delta V. I want to know how much Delta V we're going to get out of it. So, uh, 2048 there, let's say. I'm surprised we didn't get interplanetary avionics yet. We might be unlocking that right now. Okay, no extra. A tiny little bit. Is that worth... Uh... Oh no, now it, it doesn't say it costs that much. I guess it was the extra battery that was very expensive. Tooling cost is tiny. We'll tool that, okay. Alright. Uh, 67 funds for a little bit of extra Delta V. Fair enough. Oh wait, I think it didn't put the... Uh, I bet it didn't put the RCS fuel in. Let me see. Yeah... Shoot. Now it costs a bundle. <laughs> Fine, whatever. From this tech level on, your vehicles can... Okay, maybe we need tech level 2 so that it can act like a relay. That's power hungry. Okay, let's see. We always have to increase the active transmission time to get the actual number. And so, but we, we have, if we spin this way around, the, the way I normally do, 
uh, so normal orientation, uh, we have almost twice the amount that we need. And since we'll be in a high orbit, we're not going to be blocked by the Earth so much. So we should recharge just fine, in theory. Now, as far as the bandwidth is concerned, maybe we can knock that down just a tad. I mean, the transmit power. Um, I want the four bits, though. It seems like we can't change the transmit power, so we gotta stick to the four bits. Anyway, so that is our new geostationary satellite attempt. Um, so, tracking station. Yes, we can upgrade our tracking station. We might as well. Expected cost per day, 223. Well, I like that they say that. I guess we have enough. Okay, so we're upgrading our tracking station as well. Alright. So now I want to get a film camera return capsule. And we're gonna do that at ELA 2. So we're gonna need our smaller rocket. We have an improved film camera. Oh my god, I don't want to bring that back. <laughs> um, uh, maybe I should just get a biological sample. We've got an advanced biological sample. For our first little return capsule, maybe we should do the advanced biological sample. Well, this is the science sample return capsule, though. Based on Corona. I don't know how it works, though. I've never used this part. What's built in and what isn't? Note that the heat shield on this part is a heat sink, meaning it can only survive steep re-entries with peak heat flux, but low total heating. Well, we're gonna need a bigger core. I guess the actual aperture is here. This is actually the camera part, I think. I think the capsule is supposed to go on top. I wonder if there are other parts related to it. Sample return command module, see? Well, okay, we've got that. So what I want to do is actually move that up, not have this core at all. I feel like this is supposed to, like, interact with this. Like there's, there's some something that's supposed to combine these things. Well, let's just double check. I mean, yeah, we've got plenty of Delta V for this just to put it into polar orbit and what we're going to do is increase the size of these tanks so that we can have more RCS and then we're also gonna have to have some propulsion on that thing and parachutes presumably unless the little command module has a parachute got communication, it's got command. How light is that? Wait a second. Have I missed a trick here? Controllable, 1.5 tons. I mean 0.15 tons. It's tiny. I should have used this the whole time. Let's see. What kind of a probe can we make out of this? Let's not have an antenna. You're probably a bad antenna anyway. And that's our one bit. I wonder if that little engine would be viable. 404 meters per second, just like this. That's enough for lunar orbit right there. Doesn't have spare room for stuff. But maybe it does have RCS. Hold on. Oh, it does have RCS, but it's nitrogen, so we probably don't want to rely on it too much. It does have a parachute. We don't even need to worry about parachute. Oh, we should totally make our lunar lander out of this. What if we just had that one KDU engine? It's huge. Okay. Um... Oh. The burn time on this is 40 seconds, so even with the- I don't know what they do with 40 seconds of burn time on this, but, um... If we could push it a little bit, or have two of them... Because that's a good idea.
That's a lot of thrust to weight ratio. But that is enough to land on the moon with and within the controllability of this probe core, 0.15 tons. So, well, that, this is not what we're doing this time. But now that I've discovered this little sample return command module, I wish that we could get rid of the parachute and make it lighter even. The cheats are potentially endless. No, <laughs> uh, okay, so it's got nitrogen. This has a decoupler. Is that decoupling at the top or at the bottom though? Once again, I feel like there's some way of adapting these things that I'm not really understanding, but let's just, I, I don't want to take a chance on that. And we're going to put enough power in here. It's only got 30 electric charge. Enough power in here to, what, what kind of electric charge did it consume incidentally? That's a lot. It'll be functionally dead within a short amount of time. Well, I am going to put a battery. Um, we're going to need a service module tank. Okay. 12 hours. I'd actually want 24 hours if possible. Wish we could just slap a battery on. <laughs> Is that too much to ask? Maybe I should just add it to the core down here. But that probably is going to cost a lot too. I don't know, we've got some spare volume. That only gives us 2,000. So, deorbit engines. Oops. 114 meters per second. I think we can deorbit with that. 10 tons of avionics. No supplementary power. And we're trusting this film return capsule to actually do film return capsule things. We don't need the commutatron, I think. We need uh, its own antenna back in. Let's see, antenna planning. We're not going very high up. Let's just go with this. We probably don't need to transmit too much stuff. Okay. Oops. So now what's its power consumption? 20 days. This thing on its own is 20 days. But it's still 1 day, 12 hours for everything. Plenty of Delta V for polar orbit. We'll see how it goes. Polar camera. Let's try it. Yeah, we'll have to unlock those. So, polar camera or geosat? Which one first? Polar camera, looks like. No idea how this thing works, so... You will see. But that little probe core, it could be the answer to all of our prayers, I mean. Are there other little probe cores like that floating around that I don't know about? I was fooled by these procedural avionics into thinking that they were, you know, good. Okay. SAS on throttle up. Nope. Today my throttle isn't working. So Z it is. Okay. Okay. But uh, ignition. And launch. Okay, booster set. They've really forced us to do everything like the Soviets do instead of being able to do the really, really tiny probes that Americans used to do. Unmet requirement. Two years? No, we've got the wrong thing. This thing is useless. Two years? Based on the Corona program. Well, not... I mean, which Corona program? I guess we'll get a tiny, tiny portion of it or something. Max eccentricity 0.04. So I guess we have to be in a very circular orbit. 
I, that's probably the only requirement we're not going to meet. Needs a lot of power too. I don't think I don't know if we have enough. We'll see. Oh. Well, that wasn't circular enough. We need to dump propellant. I mean, it is 200 units, so you know. Oh, these actually can control it? Wow. Impressive. I did it too early though. And we only have one more ignition with them, so I don't have any choice right now. Hmm. Okay, maybe... If we use them in pairs... Is it happy yet? Oop, uh, it said running. Um, we're just gonna leave it like that. <laughs> we'll see what we get. I'm gonna arm the parachute now. <laughs> Let's just... It's not a low enough periapsis, but... Should we just let everything else ablate? Yep, we should just do the early film camera instead of this business. This is too ambitious for us. Now we have comms. I could separate it off now if I want to. And it's a friendly comm station, in fact. We should do range safety to prevent it from getting into enemy hands. Hmm. Oh well, too late. Well, they want a negative periapsis. It's negative now. <laughs> we'll have to pick it up from Antarctica, though. I guess there's McMurdo Station there. Better all explode. Our parachute can't carry all of it. Does it have to throw us off like that, though? Whoa, whoa, no, don't go pointy for end first. Don't do that. Eventually, I can decouple with comms through McMurdo if we can get that. Oh. Okay, yeah, yeah, you explode too. That's that's fine. Okay, but now uh, you front bit don't, okay? No. 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 Okay, yes. No. No. <laughs> no. We don't even have signs on this. I, I don't even care about this much. There's probably nothing in here of any value. The battery is the problem. The battery could explode. We have a huge battery there. We'll have to reconsider that. Don't give in! It gave in! Ah. <laughs> Sucks. All right, I don't like that film return capsule. Back to Space Center. It does have a parachute. I don't know how strong the parachute is, but you know what? Mm, maybe it's not the best thing. We probably want more than one uh, point one five tons worth of controllability. So, and we have heat shield. Well, we have heat shield. <laughs> we have heat shield. It's pretty heavy. You are not supposed to be a drug shoot. Why are you configured like a drug shoot? See, this gets. Uh, I I want it to be a main shoot, but it's got drug shoot numbers. I swear that's messed me up before. Well, let's just have it be able to carry one ton. Well, these did a good job last time. Ooh. Didn't realize it's gonna be that wide though. 
Hmm. Type heatsink. I guess that's all we've got. Okay, well that'll be enough to deorbit us. I don't know. This is gonna be a little bit pokey outy though. I'm gonna surreptitiously tuck them in. Is that gonna be an issue for the fairing? Well, we'll see if the heat shield explodes. <laughs> um, Delta V seems all right. But still gotta go into polar orbit. Nothing needs to be tooled. Okay, polar camera, smaller version. Okay, so the Geosync sat launch will be ready next. Oh, just barely actually. Oh, I'll we'll start rolling this one out too. Well, this is still rolling out. That one's already done. I guess we're launching the polar camera again first. <laughs> it managed to beat the Geosync sat out. Will this be our first thing returned safely from orbit? SAS on, follow up, and ignition, and launch. We just want science here. Maybe I should have tossed on a goo contain container too. But we've got probably a chunk of the goo stuff from space already because we carry one on the plane. Uh, there's still plenty though. Flying high as well. And then a lot on biological sample too as well. That's for one day. So this will work with it I think. Space low. That point six that we got was probably with the bell. Probably with the plane. I didn't think we get bi a biological sample too with the plane. I don't want to go too high, otherwise it's harder to retro. Okay, booster set. Okay, separation and ignition. Good old Gamma 2s. Better get my science. Wait a second. Oh, this one still doesn't have a decoupler. Gosh no. I forgot to change it. Its decoupler is disabled. Ah. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> well, we'll get what we can get with the electric charge. Oh wait, this still has these D orbit engines. Okay, maybe... hold on. Retrograde then. Uh, I will arm the parachute right now. This is a bit problematic. So, to use the engines at the top, we're going to have to flip to prograde. If we want to do that. Maybe we won't need to. Because then we'd have to flip back as well. And will we have comms at that point is what I wonder. Well, that's less than they wanted, so... Oh well, we'll try. Are those little RCS even working? I don't know. Oh no 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 no. Uh oh. Okay, they don't understand the orientation. Shoot. Yeah, they don't like being backwards. Okay, retrograde then. Or more specifically that. Guess we can't get as low as we need to. We'll see how it works. Well, apparently we're not picking up McMurdo Station this time. We're in the atmosphere. We will see. 
It's sort of steep, but not quite as steep as they said it needed to be for this kind of heat shield. Planetary photography depleted. Jeez. Okay. Oh, oh, don't go, don't get caught. No, no, not the parachute. Uh... Now we're the wrong way around and all is, all is lost. Well, it's going about the same as it did in real life. <laughs> okay. Right, well, we can use those engines at the bottom. These didn't... because they can control it and gimbal, I guess. And it doesn't say that they can gimbal, but they, they were able to turn us. But... They wanted to go the wrong way around. So, putting them backwards seems like a bad idea. So I'm just gonna leave those off. And their tanks. Um... This guy... Wasn't impressed by its heat tolerance. <laughs> but as long as we're oriented the right way, maybe. This, we need the decoupler this time. I mean, these uh, didn't get us to a low enough periapsis. So I'm thinking about that. Maybe we should just underfuel this stage, too. We could have the old extra gamma 2 thing and have that light. That might be simpler. So, two to make orbit and one to come back down. Okay, another polar camera. I think it was like Discoverer 13, right? The first one that actually worked. Well, we can launch during daylight with the geosync sets. Okay, SAS on. My physical throttle isn't working. Throttle up. And... Ignition. And launch. Deneb rocket is on its way. Okay, fairings. Okay, and... No, it's just short. But... That should be pretty close to where we want it to be. Maybe, we probably want it like here though. Let's see. We'll be falling back down and everything, it'll be very dramatic. See what's that periapsis? That's still fine. Just the comms are a problem. See, uh, this is gonna be like a dead zone. Okay. Go for it. It's been more wobbly than usual. We had the problem before too. It's been more wobbly than usual with this thing. And we are out of communications, so that's great too. Well, at least we're in orbit. And this was meant to fire all the way through, so we weren't going to stop it. Okay, well, we will definitely have to replot this. We can't fix that maneuver or anything. Given the cones that it has, I don't think it's going to help with um, with the lunar communication. Unless the moon is on this side. I guess if the moon is over here, it'd be fine. They're supposed to have 25 units of commsat payload, but it's not appearing there. I think that is a problem. Somewhere along the way, I must have accidentally not put it in. That would not be good. Well, we needed to test this out anyway. Well, we have to toss off this stage. 
So what we're doing is we're using two of these engines first and then the third one afterwards. They each have two ignitions though, so... Okay, and throttle up and go. We just need to keep communications through this. Well, we should start the infrared radiometry, I suppose. Missing the commsat payload. Are we missing the commsat payload? Yeah, we are. Shoot. Must have resized the avionics and forgot to add that in. At least we'll get the science, maybe. Inclination 3.5 right now. Okay, that's basically what was asked for there. We don't have that much. We might have with the RCS. Okay, something like that will be fine. But it doesn't look like we have enough exactly. So much conage. I guess if the moon's over here, it'll be fine. So for safety's sake, so it, uh, just in case if one engine fails, it doesn't spin out, spin out of control. I'm gonna run the center engine. Oops, let's get that stuff. And go. I'm also using the RCS at the same time. Uh, I don't think we'll have quite enough. But we'll still have a commsat. Okay. Well, there's the orientation we want it to be in. We probably should have spun it up. But it doesn't reach the specified orbit, so we'll need just a little bit more. And most of that will be if our AJ-1027 stage could actually do what it's supposed to do. Um, we are going to turn avionics off because we can't control it anyway. Um, that's the antenna. Shut down. Hopefully the infrared radiometry will send something at some point. No, it sent a little bit there. I guess over a long period of time it'll send. Hopefully something will get done. <laughs> 